Yeah, it's been a good series, guys. You can clap for that. Yeah. God is doing a work in y'all's life. God is doing a work in my life. He's constantly doing something. He's up to something always, and it's just so cool to, to see you guys worship, to see you guys come here week after week. It really just, it just makes me happy, like it really does, and then watching you guys worship um, authentically and just seeing just how God is working in your life has just been so amazing, and like I said, this series has been incredible. I've learned so much from it, um, and just studying for it and listening to the past couple of weeks. You heard some, some snippets, some clips from the last few weeks, and if you haven't heard the last three messages, I want to encourage you, go to YouTube. This is a shameless plug. Go to YouTube, Scottsdale Students, hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell so that you know if you miss a message or if you miss any content that we put out there, then you can check it out on YouTube. So go ahead and do that. Um, and if you've, actually, let's do this. Who has seen all three weeks so far? Who has come every week? Yes, of this series. Very good. That's awesome. I'm proud of you guys. Those of you that aren't raising your hands, you know what to do. Um, hit the bell. So it's really great. But I want to give you a recap of the last few weeks. Um, the first week I was able to speak, um, and I talked about how righteous motives move mountains. I got to play the trumpet. It was so much fun. And we talked about serving people, having a righteous motive while serving other people. And then week two... Stephanie, our very own, she came in hot. She was doing an incredible job. It was so awesome. And she talked about prayer. Where are you at, Stephanie? That's cool. She's somewhere. She's doing, she's doing the, work, the, the Lord's work. She's praying or something. I don't know. But week two, she talked about prayer. Um, and she talked about how prayer is powerful when our perspective is biblical. And then week three, our very own Josh Hansen, our family pastor, came in and he talked about not judging other people to get the log out of your eye. Do you guys remember the helmet and the contraption with the big log? And then Leighton came up here and he was trying to get the speck out of Leighton's eye, but it wasn't working. Where are you at, Leighton? That's, what, that's my man. That's what I'm talking about. And he said, judge no one, serve everyone. This series has been incredible and I'm excited about tonight. And this is a big night. This is a big night because we are wrapping up, we are concluding the Sermon on the Mount. We are concluding the best message ever spoken. And that was 2,000 years ago and we're still talking about it today. So this is a time that I think is important for you to get out your notes. Maybe you have it on your phone, maybe you have a pencil, maybe, maybe I've seen people write on their hand. I don't know about that, I don't know how I feel about it. But whatever kind of writing utensil you have or your phone, this is a night that I want you to take notes. This is a night that I want you to lean into what Jesus is saying. Because like I said, he said these things 2,000 years ago and they're still rocking and shaking our world today. The word of Christ, the word of God is so powerful, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It's alive and it's active. And tonight, we're going to read from it because we value God's word. We believe that we can communicate with God through his word and that's so valuable and that's such a blessing and an honor that we get to do that. And like I said, this is huge because here's the deal. The world is constantly telling you, they're telling you as a middle schooler and as a high schooler how you should live your life. What is acceptable? Not what is right or wrong, but what is acceptable, which is dangerous because then there's no truth. There's no truth. There's no moral truth even. It's just like, ah, I think this is accepted. Let's do it. YOLO, right? I'm going to do whatever I want. That's what the world teaches, right? But God teaches differently. And it's so important that we look to God's word and we listen to him so that we are walking on the right path. Colossians 3, 2. I love this. It says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. A lot of times, we look at the world and we're like, I want that. I want to be like that. I want to be like that person. I want to look like that. I want to dress like that. And we start getting into this trap. We start falling into this pit. And it's hard. I've fallen in that pit before too. I remember in middle school, 
Everyone knows as you leave elementary school, you have your group of friends and you're like, BFF forever, like forever, 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 right? Your best friends forever, forever, okay? BFF forever, okay? It's a big deal. And you're in elementary school, you leave in fifth grade and you're like, yeah, we'll always be friends until we're like 192. It's going to be great, right? And then you get into middle school and it's like they drop like flies. And you're like, where did all my friends go? What happened to my friends? Where are they? Like, why are they not my, why aren't we hanging out anymore? We used to play ball. We used to do all these other things, and now we don't do them anymore. Where are they at? And so your whole career of middle school, you spend your time, eighth graders, you know what I'm talking about, high schoolers, you know. You try to fit in with a new friend crowd, or you try to find a new friend crowd, because it's like, I got to be accepted, and I got to have my friends The world's telling me I'm a loner if I don't have any friends, so I'm going to find friends. And sometimes we find the friends that aren't really the best option for us. Maybe they're not the wise choice for us. Maybe they're the friends that kind of bring us down. Maybe they're the friends that, that, uh, that talk about us behind our back, but we still like them anyways because we want to fit in. We want to be cool. I was there in middle school. I know. And we're in high school, it gets a little bit more tough because you get a little bit more freedom from the parents, right? You start driving or maybe you can get rides from people. I was the kid that always got rides from the seniors. And I was like, thought I was hot stuff because I was like, yeah, seniors are driving me around. I get to do whatever I want. Mom's cool with it. I can do whatever I want. But the problem is you want to look cool at the same time. And so you start going to those parties that you know you probably shouldn't be going to. You start going to those parties and there's alcohol there and you're like I've never tried that but everybody's doing it and I'm watching movies and shows on TV where teenagers that look like they're 35 that are teenagers like what is up with this like you're 35 bro you're not a teenager like (laughs) your muscle density does not look like that in high school anyways that's a side note wow (laughs) there's some shows that I'm watching and like you are not in high school you are a grown man grown woman. Anyways, and you're watching these shows and you're like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to live. So yeah, let me, let me get that Corona, right? Put a little lime in it, it'll be great. It's like, no, what? Or, or, or maybe, you know, they, they got something a little stronger. They got some weed and you're like, okay, that makes me nervous. That's fire to my mouth. I don't know about that, but I'm going to do it anyways. And that's, that happens to a lot of us. And it's that high schoolers, you get that, that chance to try these different things so that other people think that you look cool. And then eventually you feel sick to your stomach, or especially the next morning, you feel terrible. Too much lime, I guess. I don't know. Right? And you feel like trash, right? And that's the path that you feel like you're stuck on and you're walking through this and it's like, wow, this is so hard. Here's the deal, teenagers. The world is cruel. It is. The world is cruel, and it's not any easier on your generation. If anything, there's more people watching you today than ever before because of our social media. There's more people that you can see. There's more cultures that you can watch, and you can try to figure out what part of the culture do I want to be a part of? Like, what what culture do I want to fit in with? It's hard. It's cruel. And that's why I believe this message is so important tonight because what Jesus says, he talks about these things and he's like, hey, he's so counterculture. He's like, no, 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 look, I have a path for you. I have a purpose for you. I have a plan for you. Not for you to be sick on a Saturday morning because you tried things to fit in, but maybe energized so that you could go and serve the least of these. God has a plan and a purpose for you, and I believe that there are two paths that we can take. And Jesus talks about those two paths. He gives us those two paths, and he gives us the outcome of those two paths. We have the godly path, and we have the worldly path. And before we dive into the scripture, before we dive into the conclusion of of Jesus giving one of the best messages ever preached in history, I I want you to ask three questions. Here's the three questions. This is, take a minute. What path are you on right now? Is it where you really want to be? And do you think it's where God desires you to be? Think about that for a second. Where am I at? So where I want to be. 
Is it where God wants me to be? Matthew says this, Matthew, Jesus is actually speaking, but Matthew 7, 13 is recorded and it says, this is Jesus speaking, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Where are you right now? Where do you want to be? Where does God desire you to be? Here's what's hard. You've got people telling you, no, 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 this is fun. This is going to be enjoyable. This is all about us. This is our time. And their motive is only on themselves, right? It's not about God. It's about themselves. And it's about the instant gratification that they get from following the world's path. The YOLO life. You only live once, right? The I'm going to do everything I possibly can do because life isn't very long. Life is short. So I'm going to seize the occasion and I'm just going to go crazy. Let's go. Jesus even says that that, that path, that, that religious path, that is difficult, so why even do it? Teenagers, I want you to listen very closely right now. The majority is not always right. The majority is not always correct. A lot of times we think that the majority is correct, we think the majority is right, and so we follow after the majority. But they're not always right. That's why it's so important that we test everything. That's why it's so important that we know God's word and we embed it in our hearts and in our minds so that as we walk throughout life, as you walk through middle school, as you walk through high school, you know how to defend your faith. You know where you stand and what path you are supposed to be on. But a lot of us, we're not waking up, gearing up for the day. We're not reading our Bibles and we're just looking on Instagram. What are we immediately looking at? The world. Comparing our lives to the world. We could be reading God's word and saying, man, this is, God has great plans for me and and, and, and I want to follow after his will. But you know what? What are we doing? We're waking up looking at the gram. I do it. I fall for this all the time. It's important, y'all, that we test everything because the world is going to bring you down. Jesus says this about false prophets. Check this out. Beware of false, I'm sorry, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit. That is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. Could you imagine just being so hungry, so thirsty, and like you see like a grape on a vine, and it's like, ooh, that's tasty. Let me get one. And you go because it looks good like the world. The world's telling you, look, look at us. We're flashy. We're awesome. Yay. And then you grab that and ow, you prick your finger. You hurt yourself. It's the same thing when we follow the world. When we follow the path that the world has for us, it looks good, and it looks like we need it, but then the closer we get, the more hurt we become. And then you get stuck, right? Check this out, this next next verse. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. I think this is awesome because Jesus, before, right before he talks about, hey, don't judge other people. Love other people. But Jesus also is saying, have a good judgment of character. Be able to discern who you hang out with. Because there's some people in this world that is all about them. It's not about you. It's not about Jesus. It's all about them. And they look fun. They look like it's, they're, they're a great time. They look like it's going to be a great relationship. But next thing you know, you're trapped. You're stuck. You're stuck. You're hurting because you're stuck in that relationship. You're stuck with those people. You're stuck in that decision that you made. And I don't want any, any single, any person in this room, I don't want any person in this room to be stuck or hurting because they chose the wrong path. We have two paths to take. Which one are you on right now?
That takes me back to the week one. When I think about judgment day and think about the path that you decided to take. Is it the godly path or the worldly path? Did you decide to take those instant gratification, those instant pleasures of the time, of the world? And then when you stand at the feet of Jesus, at the Lord of Lords, and he looks at you, he's, he's looking at your life because you've walked the path that the world had for you. And he says this, Matthew seven twenty three. he will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. Never knew you. Get away from me. You who break God's laws, get away from me. And you're standing there. And you remember this moment right here. <laughs> and you're like, dang it. That path looks so fun. They looked like they were having a good time. They were enjoying themselves. God, give me another chance. He's giving you the chance right now. Our God is a loving God who cares for you deeply. Maybe he's tugging at your heart right now. Maybe he's saying, hey, I love you. I care about you. I want you. And you're like, man, give me another chance. Well, here's what Jesus says. So that when you get to that judgment day, God says, my good and faithful servant, come in. Welcome home. Check out what Jesus says. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Guys, we got to build that foundation, and it's got to be sturdy because this world is hard. It's cruel. It's tough. It's mean. It doesn't care about you. The enemy, enemy Satan, is prowling around like a lion, wanting to devour you, trying to pull you away further and further from the truth. But man, if you choose the righteous path, the narrow gate, man, life is going to be amazing. But I think the problem is we're not willing to give up some things of this world. We've got baggage that we want to hold on to, right? We've got some sin baggage and we're like, you know what? I've got this sin issue that I know it's bad for me, but I want to hold on to it. I just, it's, it's kind of nice. It's, it, you know, sometimes I, I go back to that and it just keeps piling on. I've got this other sin issue that, you know, I know I need to get rid of. I know it's bad. But I'm going to hold on to it. Then I've got these relationships that I know that I shouldn't be in. Oh, but they're fun. It's a good time. Relationships, friend relationships, dating relationships, right? That are probably unhealthy. Let's see if I can get this around my neck. Ugh. Yeah. I'm comfortable still. I can walk through life. It's kind of heavy. But I can deal with this. And it's like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to the past because, because I don't want to give that up. I'm, I'm going I'm to keep on sinning. Cool. Oh, wait, one more thing. Let me hold on to this one more thing in life. And I'm standing here, and now I'm having a problem. <laughs> now I'm crumbling. This is not easy. But this is how a lot of us walk throughout life with baggage. You don't see it, but this is what it looks like to God. <laughs> He's seeing it. You feel it, but you don't see it. And you, you're, you're looking at that gateway, and you're looking at yourself, and you're like, I can't fit through that. There ain't no way. I can't even open the door. There ain't no way. Oh, look, there's a path. Look where everyone else is walking. Everyone else is stumbling over their baggage, having a hard time, but I'm just going to follow them. Here I go, following everybody else's, else's ways, else's sin pattern. The majority is not always right. You know what's awesome? It's that Jesus says, let me carry that for you. Let me take that off of you. 
Check this out, Matthew 11, 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. One at a time, start realizing, wait a minute, this isn't how I'm supposed to live. Wait a minute, I can, I can lay this at the feet of Jesus. I'm already feeling better. I'm laying it all at the feet of Jesus. Here you go, God. And all of a sudden, you feel freedom. You're not chained down by the world, by your burdens, by your baggage. Instead, you're free. Guys, it feels so good to take all those bags off. And I want to tell you that it will feel so good running to Jesus and saying, God, take this. Take this. High schoolers, you might get this. Middle schoolers, it might take you a minute. But check this, this out. I love this quote. We can't walk on two roads in two different directions at the same time. You want to go deep, high schoolers? There you go. We can't walk on two roads in two different directions at the same time. Meaning, you know, you're like <laughs> going through life. Uh, you know, it's a Friday night. Yo, YOLO, what up? Oh, it's Sunday. I'm going to leave that right there for a second. Coming in, Jesus, hallelujah, right? That's, that's fake. That's not genuine. People see right through that. Oh, man, it's Wednesday. I got to let this stuff go for a minute. Here I go. Is that living? That's a back and forth life. That's lukewarm. That's not following Christ the way we should. The world is teaching us all these different things and telling us all these different ways that we should live and what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. But God is saying, hey, I've got a path, I've got a purpose for you. And I want you to walk in that. But Tucker, what about the difficulty of that path? Well, good thing you don't have the baggage. Good thing Jesus has got that taken care of, right? And good thing you're on solid ground, right? You're on Jesus' foundation. You're reading God's word. You're solid in God's word, right? Check this out, Matthew 7, 35. It says, though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. You are founded on Christ and you are able to stand up to what the world has for you. You are able to stand up in trial. Your capacity is so huge because you have Christ on your side. You can handle it. You know why? Because Jesus rose again on the third day. He is now living in you. That same power lives in you. If you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior and you've decided, I'm gonna walk through that narrow path The world has a lot to offer, but Jesus has more. And I think what's so cool is in the conclusion of this message is when the people saw that Jesus was done, they were astounded. Because they've been hearing things of the world, they've been hearing different hypocrites talk about different things, but when they heard Jesus, something changed. Maybe you've been looking for truth tonight. Maybe you've been looking for the path tonight. Maybe you're tired of this fake stuff and you want the real stuff. You're ready for real love. You're ready for a love that loves you no matter what you've done. Well, that's the love of Christ. Matthew, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching for he taught with real authority. Quite unlike their teachers of the religious law. That's pretty awesome. See, I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through Christ. And when we decide to lay our baggage at Christ, we get to open that door. And we get to step in to righteousness. It's awesome on this side. It's amazing to walk in the gate, in the narrow gate, in the narrow path. 
something special about that. When we say, Jesus, you are Lord. I want to follow you for all of my days. I'm going to repent. I'm going to turn from this junk, and I'm going to walk through that narrow gate. I'm going to walk through the gate that is of righteousness and that leads to life in eternity. So I want to end with the the questions I started with. Three questions right here. It says this. What path are you on now? Is it where you really want to be? Do you think that's where God desires you to be?